Indy cars are open cockpit race cars which compete in the annual Indianapolis 500 race in the U.S. The cars are entirely custom built. Even the driver's seat is specially contoured to the driver's body shape and the position in which he or she sits most comfortably in the car. The custom-made driver's seat in an Indy car is made of fire-resistant fabric over impact-absorbing foam. It has openings at the shoulder, lap, and legs for the safety harness. To make the seat, they first have to produce a template, which is in itself a two-day process. Technicians prepare, then pour an adhesive into a bag full of foam beads. The adhesive contains resin and a hardener. Once the adhesive seeps in, they squeeze out the air and tie the bag closed. Then they knead the bag to spread the adhesive over all the foam beads inside. Next, laying the bag flat, they spread the adhesive saturated beads in an even layer. They install a valve attach it to a vacuum pump, and suction out most of the remaining air. They shape a cavity in the middle to receive the driver's body. Once they've vacuumed out enough air to make the bag tight enough to hold the shape of this cavity, they place it in the race car's cockpit, pressing the foam beads as snugly as possible into all the nooks and crannies. This ensures the car seat will fit properly and not shift under the driver who now has to sit in the car so they can custom contour the template to his body in the driving position. Once he's settled comfortably with hips and shoulders square and wearing his helmet, they begin taking measurements, starting with the height of his head, critical for aerodynamics, and of his sight line over the hood, critical for safety. Both measurements must conform with the Racing Association's strict regulations. They also measure the distance between his chest and the steering wheel and ensure there's adequate leg clearance to enter and exit the cockpit. The driver sits down, gets out, gets back in several times over as the technicians measure and make adjustments. The entire process taking about 40 minutes. When it's all done, they run the vacuum for another four hours and then let the foam cure overnight. The next morning, they use a hot knife to melt a line through the foam and dislodge the template from the cockpit. The driver returns for a final two to three hour sitting, during which the techs trim the foam as closely as possible to the contour of his body. The shape now finalized, they cover the entire surface with cloth adhesive tape in a matte finish. This creates a non-reflective background suitable for laser scanning. Onto this dull surface, they adhere positioning targets. Reflective dots spaced four inches apart, which create a grid pattern over the entire template. The 3D laser scanner reads these reflective dots. Which a computer translates into a 3D image. Specialized software then converts this image into a technical drawing which guides an automated router to cut the seat parts out of polypropylene foam. This precision cutting process takes four to six hours. The router cuts out six to eight sections, which technicians then carefully glue together into the full seat. They cover the finished seat in fire retardant material, first applying the fabric with spray adhesive, then trimming it to the shape of the seat. This foam is quite elastic, so it absorbs impact, helping protect the driver. At the same time, it has memory, so after a blow, it regains its driver-customized shape. <laughs>